Yeah, so how did you get over the MCO? We suffered quite a bit. I mean, we enjoyed the beginning of it. Everyone started spending like no tomorrow. I think that's the that's the first year, and then of course there goes the second year. So the second year, I there's a halt to it. And then at one point, we makan kosong for four months, and we have to pay our rent, our everything, our bills, feed ourselves. So, but okay lah, because the first year was. It was tough anyway, right? Mm, mm. So manageable, manageable. Just don't eat that much. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Karen's Chen, Utah Works. Thank you for talking to me. I came across you through a mutual friend of ours, uh, Jeremy Lim, the owner of restaurant Blackbird in KL. He said that when you come to Penang, you must talk to only one guy, and that's uh, you, um, because you you run this bespoke, customized high, um, very premium leather maker out of Penang, not out of Italy. And uh, you have a very interesting background because you came from the engineering side with, yes. I think the last job was with Motorola. Yes. And then completely by chance, you fell into uh, the world of artisanal leather goods making. And here you are seven years later with your own workshop in Carnarvon Street in Penang. And uh, you make these incredible items uh, from the best hides and leathers from all around the world for discerning customers, again, all around the world. So tell us how you started. How I started? Huh? So 2014, after Motorola, supposedly to another company, but unfortunate, unfortunate events happens, huh? so didn't manage to get there. So um, I used to hang out at this uh, cafe, uh, friends of mine, it's called Narrow Marrow. And um, I used to do shoe polishing there like, for fun. Until one day my friend offered me, um, he asked me why not start polishing for my clients. So I said, okay lah, you know, 10 ringgit a pair lah, for fun lah. Yeah. But of course, um, after I left my job, it didn't take uh, too much time for me to finish my saving lah. Yeah, I make more than I, more than I spend lah. So eventually I was left with uh, 500 ringgit and I started with a, uh, piece of leather, couple belt buckles, few simple tools, and uh, this is how it, uh, this is how it hit off uh, um, 180 ringgit for the first belt. <laughs> okay, so coming from traditional Chinese parents, right, um, your parents must have been very, I guess, um, aghast that you're doing this. And they did so for the first three years. Um, mm. What did you tell them? Actually, I've, I've noticed that an undercurrent of very, very passionate young Malaysians who are doing amazing things and new kind of jobs, right? Um, so, how do you overcome your parents' you know, lack of enthusiasm? Oh, overcome? Uh, you can never overcome your parents. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I'm not sure. I guess it's just proving them wrong. You prove them wrong by showing them results, uh, as usual. Uh. I think since high school, secondary, college time, whenever you want to prove your parents, you show them good results. Ma. So I guess uh, this is how I prove to mine, ma. at least my parents. Ma. So I need to show them that I can survive alone. No? You've got this amazing workshop in Cardamon Street in Penang. Mm -hmm. You've got this huge space that you've got your machines here. You know, it's just you hand making stuff with your girlfriend. I find it fantastic. Um, a lot of people would, would pay top dollar for this kind of stuff from Italy, mm -hmm. but very few people will think it comes from Penang. And then you got this amazing hides, right? This amazing cow hide, ostrich hide, um, elephants, elephant sharks, hide. seal. Yes. Why is it that you buy the best of everything? I mean, you know, it's not as if it's a, you know, hugely commercially profitable because your cost is very high. Yes. I guess I'm just being careful, you know. I wanted to show off one. I can, um, you know, offer you the best thing, whether or not you want to come. That's another thing, lah. It's pretty much like long slama <laughs> chakui <laughs> Yeah, but no, I, actually, cause I, I myself, I am really, really into super premium materials. I've seen um, all sorts of things. Like, it can be from wood to uh, precious metal to leather and so on and since I'm in this line and um, since I can manage as well so why not right I mean there must be someone out there who wanted this uh. there must be uh. 
So what are the success you know, metrics that you've been able to uh, enjoy, you know, to prove your parents wrong? I guess, I guess it's uh, just to be able to um, live with a table full of food, I guess. I guess, you know, to be able to put food is one thing. I yeah. mean, coming out as an engineer without any knowledge to uh, manage a business and um, I think zero knowing anything in business is wow, one of the toughest man. And if I can manage it, I guess my parents. So you're able to survive on your own. You learned mm-hmm. everything yourself. Yes, solely from the internet, from books, and countless of documentaries. Yeah. So so what kind of stuff do you do now? What kind of stuff do I do now? You do wallets, handbags, yeah, um, I mean, belts. Actually, all sorts. Uh, apart from, I mean, other than shoes and garments. Uh, other than shoes and garments, the oddest you can find is probably BDSM equipment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you make everything completely the order, is it? Yes, correct. So they get in touch with you, and then they say, okay, I'd like a belt, and then you make it for them. Mm, correct. So uh, they will send, send in their measurements. So if not, they'll fly in by themselves so I can measure them. Oh. Yes, correct. Let's say like the first item that I mentioned, BDSM. So if, um, if it's like a harness, body harness. So wait, hang on. So BDSM stands for bondage. Um, yes. Then what is the D? What is the D? Uh? Sadism, masochism, masochism is the correct. Acidum, right? So, correct. So it's yeah for deviant sexual behavior. Yes. Okay. It's a form of art. Oh it's is really beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, if you want re- something really, really personal, and I think this is the place you come to. This is the place you come to where you can um, avoid all those cheap materials in the, in, in, in the market where currently, uh, where currently available. I think we can offer you the best one that can last up to years or probably decades if you take good care of it. And uh, it's fit to your body. I don't see why not. I don't see why not. So everything you made is completely bespoke, as in to order. Yes. So you don't like have a range like, oh, I'm going to make 10 belts this year, and then I'm going to put it in my store. Mm, and Actually, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do. Just at times, only randomly, uh, whenever I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> but usually it's because uh, the leftovers from a certain project, right? We try not to waste them. Yeah. So we, we will put life into them. So we put you know this and that all together, then we come up with like a range. But of course, I mean the price is still going to be expensive because uh, we have been working with uh, all these most expensive, not the most expensive, but the most high-end um, materials that, that, that we can find. And uh, there's no way that we can sell cheap, uh, if not we will give. Uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. So like that all. Mm. And then, um, and, and then what? So what what is your concept of, of business and money? Or, or was it takes a second secondary seat to like uh, quality and craftsmanship? Mm, concept of business, or there's no concept of business. Or there's there's no or there's none. I mean, I I I I didn't come out from a business school, so I wouldn't know you know what's the cost like, what's the margin like. And I, most of the time, some, I mean at times we sell, we're only making like a, a four or two at max, that's it. Because we have really, really high cost. I mean, each piece of leather could cost up to a couple, couple thousand bucks. And if we were to make that more than two fold, Malaysians is going to scream and Malaysians is going to scream. But your customers are from overseas or where, where well, do they come it, from? All over the place, all over the place. We, I mean... Majority is still Malaysia. Majority is still Malaysia. But every now and then we will have um, clients from China, clients from UK, Singapore. Um, yeah, all sorts of places are there. There's no specific. So the typical customer profile would be what? A mm. Quite wealthy businessman person or? Yeah, wealthy businessman, wealthy um, China says second generation, you know. Uh, very young people. Very young. Very young people who can afford. I have no idea how, but yes. And uh, yeah, basically that. But uh, mostly are those people who are bored with uh, whatever they, that they can get from the market. So when they're bored, they wanted something new or something unique. 
so they will come to us to uh, to something more special and unique oh. so they, they so that they can probably show off uh, I don't know yeah, I mean, although we've come off this huge recession in 2008, right? Mm. Um, this has been this huge influx of capital and the wealthy have become even more wealthy. So you can see it in the car world, in the watch world, in the clothing world, in the yacht world, um, they, they want to go beyond the mundane and, and ordinary, right? Correct. Mercedes is not enough. No Lamborghini is not enough. <laughs> uh, Pagani maybe, right? Or uh, McLaren, right? So. Rolex is not enough, it's Patek already, right? So it's the yes, same sir. thing with leatherwear, right? Correct. You want to go beyond your, I don't know, uh, tons or whatever, right? This is beyond tons already, isn't it? Definitely, because uh, we are sharing the same tannery with MS. and uh, Who's MS? MS. Hermes. Uh, Hermes, okay. Okay. yes. Okay. And uh, YSL, Louis Vuitton, I mean all of those. And uh, it took me a year or so uh, to collect all these um, tanneries and try to approach them so that I could acquire in uh, the lease MOQ because uh, usually they will go by 200 square feet minimum co quantity right yes so right. why would they agree to work with you if they're like you know if you don't buy so much from them no la, normally they'll push me to another downline la. yeah unless they're friendly enough no? I, yeah. I've met a few I've met a few there's uh, I think there's this one very friendly from uh, Ashland it's called it's pretty famous Halloween yeah, Halloween, um, yeah, they don't mind la, in, uh, in, the, in the least quantity. Yeah. And, and then of course there are big shops who mine, like Haas Henry from France, those who, are, who usually work with uh, Hermes a lot. And uh, it's okay, sometimes we pay a couple more hundred bucks just to uh, buy uh, lesser. La. Just to yeah. buy lesser. La. So we don't waste, la, you know. You don't buy 200 square feet and put it there and do nothing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so how did you get over the MCO and, you know... How do I get over? Yeah. Actually, we, su we, we suffered quite a bit. I mean, we enjoyed the beginning of it. Everyone started spending like no tomorrow. I think that's the, that's the first year. And then, of course, there goes the second year. Second year already, right? Yeah, second year already. Yes. So the second year, I, there's a halt to it. And then at one point, we makan kosong for four months. Wow, which is basically yeah, no money for four months, no revenues. Yes, four months, and we have to pay our rent, our everything, our bills, feed ourselves. So, but okay lah, because the first year was it was tough anyway, right? Mm, mm, so manageable, manageable. Just don't eat that much lah. <laughs> <laughs> so you continue to do this for the passion, for the artisan. You know, artisanship. It um, is. You know, obviously, I'm sure it's not hugely recurring in terms of revenue because you know it's not a department store that you run. It's. Uh, I mean. So why do you do what you do? I mean, if you if you ask anyone uh, who, who who does business, uh, no one is going to tell you that they they will import using foreign currencies. And sell it in India, especially in Malaysia. Selling it in Singapore dollars or Thai baht is fine. In Vingit, yo, think about it, ah, sing swan, no. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, to be very frank, I think I'm still lucky enough to to not have to uh, feed my family, and I'm lucky enough to be uh, to be here to just you know make money to support myself and my partner and I think this is what make it possible and this is why I'm here I guess yeah this is interesting because I think you're 33 years old this year you've been doing this for the last seven years um, and the first three of those that period was the toughest time you know and Super basically you were, you were spending more than you're earning mm. um, but that's not to say about entrepreneurship right entrepreneurship you start when you're young when you've got less to lose you're the strongest and most resilient and then you do it for five to ho hopefully you survive you survive for five ten fifteen years mm -hmm. then you come out after 15 20 years and you've got your classic 10,000 hours of you know Malcolm Gladwell-esque uh, <laughs> expertise under you and then you're ready to hit the big time right mm. I mean so, so the fact that he survived COVID is interesting. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess it's just staying resilient though. Just 
be really kiasu. Uh. Kiasu is, is the real spirit, man. No, what is being kiasu? Kiasu, uh. you don't want to admit um, failure. Uh. You, don't want, you don't want to uh, admit your defeat. Uh. You do whatever shit to, to stay alive. Uh. Whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. Like, at one point, I was left with one ringgit 90 cents for two damn fucking weeks. <laughs> Almost three, <laughs> almost three. I was, I was lucky that I fall sick and my friends send me food and drinks. If not, like, I don't think I can survive. Shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it. I mean, I mean, now that you think of it, now that I I think of it, I think it's fun. But during that time, it was shit. It was shit, man. Hopeless. Seriously, hopeless. You, yeah, you would think of any, anything uh, to do. But luckily, uh, on the third week. Another sales came in, and from that point, uh, I try my best so, to not simply waste money, la. <laughs> to not simply waste money. La. But yeah, MCO also uh, gave us like quite a few months of got song, so um, it's okay, la. it's okay. La. Living in Malaysia is not that hard. La. Yeah. So how do you plan to take the business, you know, the next five, ten years? Do you plan to stay small? Do you, do you want to expand? You know? Def- definitely, um, expansion is in the plan. Um, eventually, we will come up with two lines. One is to um, go back to the original state where everything is machine made, but we will, uh, we will um, provide the best leather that you can find, but in cheaper cost. Because we don't spend more man hours on it. Huh? We use machine, huh? but you get to enjoy the quality leather and so, right now everything is handmade right fully handmade hand stitch hand everything yeah so so explain justify the high price justify the high price uh. hmm i cannot do to be frank i mean like i said la, the cost is probably half of the bag already so if we are going to use two weeks uh, to make that two thousand bucks and one month you have got four weeks on here. So with four weeks, you, the max you could make of, let's say like, you only take two, you know, two bags, take up four weeks, and how much you are making? 4,000, 4,000, that's, that's lesser than my engineer salary, you know. So, uh, a lot of people say that, you know, things are very expensive and this and that, but it's not true. If you look at mine, our costs are rather high because we use the best stuff. And those that you can find in the market, those can cost up to what, um, eight thousand, nine thousand. If I tell you the cost, are you gonna kill yourself? Uh? <laughs> if I tell you the cost, uh, you stop buying. Uh. Yeah. So tell me, tell me the cost. Tell me how much the big brands are making off customers. Hey, one man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for example, uh, a piece of leather for us uh, that we use uh, from a tannery called Realma. Rama has been made fam- famous because of MS. As M- MS has been using them to make the, the big tree, la, the Kelly, the Birkin, and the Constance. So those for a piece of gold can hit up to six to eight hundred ringgit. Depends on the size of course. It can be it can be cheap if, if it's small. And then we're gonna make it into a bag. So a bag, let's say we take like um, a single gold, right? So that would be a, that would be the cost of maximum eight hundred. So if I were to sell it right, at most it's probably two point four k. Two thousand four hundred ringgit. Yeah. But the Birkin, the Birkin would cost about fifty thousand ringgit. Birkin minimum, yes. Or fifty thousand yes. ringgit, yeah. Fifty thousand, sixty thousand, around there. And they can go up to two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. Depends on the ladder, yes. The Croco Birkin can cost easily up to four hundred fifty. Half thousand. a million ringgit. Yes, half a million. And the cost is less than a thousand. No la, crocodile, crocodile. I, I've I've calculated before la. Uh, justifiable, justifiable. And but I believe since it's big company, right? They buy in big cargo, so the cost is definitely lesser. So it's it is justifiable if it's from a small maker like me buying two huge crocodile just to make one Birkin and sell it at four fifty k. It will be okay. That means that the cost will hit around 150. Wow. 150k. 75,000 per crocodile. Almost there, but lesser because you you will need linings, you will need a lot more yeah. um, other materials. Uh. 
and also not to mention labor because mm. yeah, yeah. the work itself is really tedious and um, to be able to source such a huge crocodile that is what that's that is another thing so a 35 cm birkin right a crocodile that doesn't mean that the crocodile is 35 cm you can only use the belly so the side right is scrap so those scrap cannot be used more. So you have to imagine yourself getting a at least forty five cm crocodile to be able to craft a thirty five cm looking a forty five cm crocodile from belly la. From belly to belly point, yeah. widest point. Yeah, yeah. Because the rest of the crocodile double pakai la. Double pakai la. Uh, the tail part is too scaly. Yeah. The, the the jaw part, the chin part is too small. Yeah. Can probably made into uh, uh, what straps, but of course it, the quality is not on par la. And also not to mention the aesthetic of the scale. Yeah. So the best part is only the belly. So what's next for you? What's next? Uh? I don't know. Moving, I guess. Moving away and then I want to set, set up a much bigger space for uh, students. So our next direction would be hosting more classes. Uh, to raise awareness actually. Yeah. Yeah, not to... Yeah. Okay, of course, we're making a bit of money from class. That definitely have to. But the main idea is to raise awareness of what um, artisans or craftsmen really are. You know, it's never about those kitchens that you buy from Hat Yai for 200 baht. It's, um, it's to understand the cost and the labor behind. You know, what is an actual real beauty of a, of a properly crafted leather goods that is very important because um, if I were to guide you right now right here to make a simple cut case like this it would probably take me three days probably wow. take me three days wow. to, to guide you lah. I mean I myself I can finish in maybe two days yeah yeah two days are to touch up everything lah. but the details in there is very very different like how do I make it say this way and yes. not flip up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And the way of uh, manipulating the scales of uh, alligator Mississippensis, you don't do it this way, why do it this way? Yes, yes. And how yes. do you not cross cut the crevices so that uh, it will prolong the life of your edges? And how do you even do a simple saddle stitch, which is uh, rather, it's not really a lost technique, uh, but it's hardly being used. Uh. Only the craftsman will know. Yeah, and how do you even properly finish an edge paint that is better than the rest? Wow. Yes. So uh, yeah, all these small little things in 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 uh, our line is what matters. It's never about the word handmade. Handmade, I can yeah, like I said uh, you know, two hundred baht versus five thousand ringgit. Both are also handmade, but why five thousand ringgit? Yeah, I think that is where. This is why you pay oh. This is why you pay so much. Oh. You yeah. see that you come to learn from us, then we will show you why is it 5,000 or you buy from us. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude, thank you so much. Hey, okay, no problem.